Hello, everyone, and welcome inside the CIF. I'm your host, Richard Tiemann, and this is your 2021 CIF Championship Preview for Champions Bowl VI. That's right, we are finally here. The stage is set. It will all come to a head this Saturday, July 17th, at the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Kickoff is at 6.35 p.m. It's the Omaha Beef. We'll take on the Salina Liberty. Omaha lost to the Texas Revolution a few years back, and then Salina lost to the Duke City Gladiators in the last Champions Bowl played in 2019. But after this last weekend, which saw the Sioux City Bandits visiting the Omaha Beef, playing each other for the fourth time this season in an epic clash of two heated rivals, final score there, 39-40, to that put Omaha in the championship picture. But who would they face? The next night we saw the Dodge City Law take on the Salina Liberty. And Dodge City kept in the game for a good while until there was a costly turnover that ultimately put things out of reach as Salina cruised to a win 55-31 to to secure that they would host Champions Bowl number 6. Salina enters this matchup at 10-1 overall, 9-1 on the regular season, and the Omaha Beef enter it at 7-4 overall, 6-4 on the regular season, and it was not easy for either team. This will be the third and final time that they meet, and it is for the championship. So my guest today for this championship preview comes as no surprise. We will be speaking with the two head coaches, head coach Marvin Jones of the Omaha Beef and Haran O'Neill of the Salina Liberty. So let's go ahead and preview Champions Bowl Six. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first up representing the away team, he is the head coach of the Omaha Beef and a former NFL linebacker. Give it up for Marvin Jones. Welcome, coach. How you doing? Oh, great, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's a big game. It's the biggest game of the year for the league and, of course, a big game for you, which we'll talk about. But, you know, I was going through both your career and Coach Haran O'Neill's career, and, of course, he kind of got his uh, championship jitters out of the way early with the, the Billings Outlaws, but has spent some time, you know, kind of trying to get back, and now he is back with Salina after appearing in the championship last year. But for you... You know, for people that don't know, you have been dealt kind of some not so great hands your early on coaching career with Colorado Crush and then with the Cedar Rapids Titans. But now with the beef, you have ownership behind you that supports you, that lets you coach and make coaching decisions. And we're seeing the product here in the championship. The Omaha Beef have a chance to win their first one after 22 seasons of operation. How do you feel after seeing this all come together? Well, honestly, I feel like it's just another game. No, I'm just teasing. No, it's a great feeling. Um, you know, like you said, I mean, early on, it's because I, I love working with football players. I love trying to help them. So I put myself in some not so good situations just because it gave me the ability to coach and to try and help these guys, in which I was able, you know, overall was able to do pretty good at far as helping guys move up. So I'm proud of it in that aspect, but it did kind of hurt me a little more on the, on the coaching side because at the end of the day, they don't care about anything but how your, your, your wins and losses look. And, you know, I, you know, before I took this job, I, you know, spoke with Ricky. I said, hey, man, you know, you know, if it's a great situation, I love to be a part of. And, you know, as long as I'm able to do things the way I need to do them, I have no issues. And we work fine with that. And um, it's worked. Um, you know, I believe in what I do. I believe in how I practice. I believe in my philosophy. And most of all, I believe in the guys that I bring here, and I'm going to coach them to the best of their ability to play the way they need to play. With you being, you know, the defensive coordinator and then interim coach for the Colorado Crush and then the head coach for the Cedar Rapids Titans, which did not have the best ownership group, as everyone in the indoor world knows, what, how, how did you not get detoured from your goal of being a coach? Like, what kept you in the game? Well, again, it was about the players. I mean, Colorado, I was, we were able to move a player up to the to the CFL, and 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 even in Cedar Rapids, despite how bad of an experience it was, um, 
you know, we had five or six guys off that team going to the CFL, XFL, and a couple got the drive drop to the AAL. So those, those were the results of that and hard work. So that never determined because the focus, um, in many cases, is just, is, it's not about me a lot of the times. And that drive is just about how can I help these guys? I mean, I've never had to experience what most of these guys did. I was a you know, first, first round, fourth pick draft choice. So I didn't have to go the route that these guys had. So it was a whole nother process for me to learn and try to really understand. And then once I got into it and I was able to help guys, I said, you know what? These guys just really need to understand what it's like, what's the expectations of, of trying to move up or play in another league. You were the interim head coach after being D.C. for Omaha. So same story, different chapter for yep. Coach Jones there. But then 2020, we were really supposed to see what a full season of head coach yep. Marvin Jones could be. And then we didn't get it. But now we're seeing, I mean... Is there anything that you feel could have gone differently had you had another season behind you or is getting to the championship pretty much, you know, the goal and here you are? Um, I'm never going to have the same same team every year. I, I expect that because of the way I recruit and try, I try to help move these guys up. But, no, I, I'll tell you what, I, I think this, this year has really taught me a lot about myself. It's really taught me a lot about coaching. I look at, how we, we, we started this season, at which I felt we had a disadvantage offensively because we lose our offensive coordinator. Um, you know, had tried a couple guys out. That didn't work out. Then I had to take it up on myself and say, you know what, I'm just going to run both sides of the ball. So that made me a better coach. Well, you had a phenomenal career as a collegiate athlete. You had a great career as an NFL athlete. But now you're a head coach, and you're in the championship game. What would a win mean to you, not only for – your accomplishments as a head coach, but overall as your whole career in football. I mean, it was great for me. It would be great for me personally as, as you know, as a, as a uh, coaching career, um, you know, but that ain't what, it, for me, it's, it's about my players. You know, it's about these guys that a lot of times people always say no to them. They've never had the opportunity to maybe move up or, or live their dream. And like I told them, this is an opportunity right now. Seize the moment. This opportunity, you, you're that close away from capturing or being part of something that's way bigger than you. These championships, they, they last forever. It's always going to be here and associated with that team. And this, and being able to do that now, the first one in the history, I mean, that that's like, you know, man, that's 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 an incredible feat, and this is something you want to talk. You know, you have for your kids, your grandkids. You were on that championship team. Well, you and the Salina Liberty find yourselves in what I'm calling a best of three series. You played each other very early on in the season in Salina. You lost there, and then they came back to Omaha, and they played you guys there later on in the season, and you guys got them there. So, best of three. Third one happens to be for the championship. What will it take to win this Saturday? Like I told my guys last night at practice, we haven't played our baseball, best ball. And that's what it's going to take to to win a game like this on the road at Salina. I mean, they're a tough team at home. I mean, I mean, they got a great head coach. I mean, he, you know, he's been there before. I mean, they, they're a very experienced team. This is a game that you have to go out and, you know, you're going to have to take the game away from them. Simple as that. They ain't going to give you the game. It should be one hell of a game. I think this will, this will probably go down in history as one of the best um, – champions bowl ever well i certainly hope so i know a lot of people are looking forward to it after not having one last year so we're making up for a lot of lost time and a lot of lost football but uh, couldn't have asked for a better stage and for two better teams a couple of never have i ever's as far as champions that one will be crowned so coach i thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it and i'll let you get back to work all right, thanks, man. Have a great day. Go Beef all day. All right, one more time, folks. He is head coach of the Omaha Beef, Marvin Jones, taking on the Salina Liberty this Saturday. Safe travels, coach. We'll see you this weekend. <laughs> all right, fans, next up, representing the home team for Champions Bowl Six. He is the head coach of the Salina Liberty Hall of Fame, Haran O'Neill. Welcome, coach. How are you today? I'm doing well and yourself, feeling blessed. I'm doing great because it is championship week. So I guess I should say bittersweet because we've come so far and now it's about to culminate. But man, um, after everything that went on with 2020 and then all the worries that we had going into this season, like not even your typical worries. It's what if we have to postpone a game or cancel a game or what do we do if a player tests positive? I mean, all this stuff. And yet 
we got through it and we're here like how do you feel right now in this week going into a championship well anytime you're going into a championship um you're one of the last teams standing so you're definitely feeling good about that um just to replay the 2020 season was very depressing for me um not having football was the first time in a long time that i was not participating in football um but definitely um, got back on the recruiting trail, got that going, and I think the pandemic did help some of those veteran players come back and actually play for us this year. So I'm um, definitely feeling blessed with all of those things happening. Here we are, you know, in the middle of July about to have a championship, and uh, we didn't lose anybody. Uh, we didn't have to reschedule or cancel anything. And so it's just a little surreal that we're here and knocking on the door of the championship. And for you, this is nothing new. As I mentioned, you are Hall of Fame, Haran O'Neal, because this year another big moment for you being inducted into the Indoor Football Hall of Fame. And I know that it was a great mark for you. And we look at your career and, you know, where does the, this rank amongst your life and your career as far as this uh, season and year altogether? Um, depending on the outcome of this um, game here Saturday, um, I'll have a better answer for you afterwards. So hopefully everything um, continues on the path that it's been on so far. And we can kind of see how that all goes on Saturday. But I'll definitely have a better answer for you Saturday. Now, your career, um, the reason you're a Hall of Famer is because you've been in it for a minute. You <laughs> have gone all the way back to um, uh, recently announced the resurgence or the resurrection, whatever you want to call it, of the Billings Outlaws, which you're familiar with. That's where you went and got your uh, first couple of rings there. Three, in fact. Uh, your first time as a head coach in 06. And then back-to-back 09 and 10. I was trying to think whose career... Uh, yours reminds me of and I kept thinking of uh, like a John Gruden who you know he went to a couple of championships early on in his career finally won one with Tampa Bay but then he stepped away from the game which you haven't done but you know it's been a while since those last championships and then of course you know he's back in the game now everybody knows Gruden his players love him and he's he's ring chasing just like you so I mean what is going to make this championship different especially after being there you know the last Last time we actually had CIF football? Um, if we're blessed enough to actually win the ball game, um, it would mean a lot. Um, it's been a while. Um, the 2019 season left a bitter taste in my mouth, and I know it left a bitter taste in all our fans' mouth, as well as all the ball players um, that was on that field and played for that team in 2019. Um, we have been eyeing this date, this Saturday. Um, ever since I walked off that field. Um, that's how laser focused I've been on. And that's why my mantra the whole year has been championship mindset. I'm, I wasn't thinking about how many games we won in the regular season or, you know, did we do this, that, and another. The main thing for me was to get back to that national championship game um, and try to put our best foot forward, put our best ball players out there, put a great game plan together, and hopefully it's executed at the, um, the rate that we need to to give us a, a good chance of trying to win a ball game. Yeah, your record. I looked it up. Uh, going into this game, one thirty-seven and fifty-nine. I mean, you know, the goal is to always win more than you lose, but that is extremely impressive. And uh, I saw in an article where you wanted to be a scout. Your agent said, "Hey, try out this." indoor football coaching gig and you're like casper wyoming well now you're in salina kansas i I don't know what the reaction was there but you're going to be there for another four years and uh, i mean if this season is indian any indication pending the outcome of saturday i mean salina is in for uh four more years of greatness i like how do you feel about your career and that quick pivot you took in casper wyoming um i really thought it was a joke but once i seen um what was offered to me um, cause it really wasn't much money at all. And that's what these, these young kids don't understand that I, I was getting paid what the players were getting paid to be the D coordinator, recruiting coordinator for, um, the Wyoming Calvary. So it's about taking an opportunity and having faith in yourself to try something new and giving your faith to the Lord and have him lead you the way that he wants you to go. Um, I never thought in a million years and, um, 20, 2005 that I would still be coaching in 2021. I never dreamt anything like that. I never dreamt in 2006 that that was my first time as a head coach, my first year as a head coach, and we go 16 and one. I never, you can't dream that type stuff up. 
So, I mean, to, to have all this happen to me and to have, you know, all the many wins, some of the tougher losses, but the losses I learned from, um, the different people, the different players, the different coaches and support staff and owners that I've been associated with, it's been a great journey. And with me, you know, being 46 now and not the young 30-year-old coming in wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, um, I'm definitely looking forward to these next four years here in Salina. Well, amen to that, and congratulations, Coach. You have had a phenomenal season, and it's not over yet. It will culminate this Saturday in Salina, Kansas, as you guys will host the Champions Bowl. So the last question, what is it going to take to win? Well, it's going to come down to execution. Um, it's going to come down to players believing in one another, players playing for one another, putting it and landing on the ground, basically putting everything out there, leave everything on the field, um, understanding what the keys are that we focus on this week in practice, offense, defense, and special teams, understanding situational football and continue to play like every game we played this year. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. And you are uh, one of the greats in the indoor game. I don't care what anybody else says. You're a Hall of Famer and you're going to continue your legacy there in Salina, Kansas. Can't wait to see what that ends up being like over the next four years. But it's not about the next four years yet. It's about Saturday, one day, and then uh, we'll see what the future holds. But you guys host Champions Bowl Six in Salina, Kansas this Saturday. And, Coach, it's been a real pleasure to watch you and your team all season long, and I wish you the best of luck, and I will see you Saturday. All righty. Thanks again, Richard. Yep, one more time for Hall of Fame, Haran O'Neill, head coach of the Salina Liberty. You take care, Coach. Have a good rest of your night. And one more big thank you to Coach Jones and Coach O'Neill for joining me on this championship edition of Inside the CIF. It's been an absolute pleasure to join you all each week as we previewed the biggest matchups all season long for the 2021 season. And don't forget, if you cannot attend this championship game, you can catch it live on the CIF Network channel on YouTube.com. But this should be a packed house, loud fans, and a lot of excitement and electricity in the air. It almost makes you wish that next season was right around the corner. But first, we must crown a new champion. Who will it be? You'll have to tune in and find out. So until next time, I'm Richard Tiemann, and this has been Inside the CIF. (laughs) 